Bolden Beautiful, 53, 34, 5, 15, 2008. Nice. Hey, how's the patient? Still on the planet. She's doing beautifully. Uh-huh. And the temperature, how are we doing? 98.6, right on the nose. Took a little bit of effort, but it looks like you're gonna be with us for a long, long time. All thanks to this woman right here. I'm really not planning on staying long. I just want to go home, spend some time with Hope and RJ, decompress a little bit. Sounds like heaven. Maybe now that Katie's out of danger, our lives will get back to normal. Normal? Wow. Well, that's the dream. Are you okay? Look, I've been going through something. It's totally unexpected. I mean, it's... It's a blessing, but yet at the same time, anyone who's been sticking pins in their Donna Logan doll hoping for a scandal, well, they might just get their wish. What kind of scandal? I have, I have a son. Oh, kicked upstairs already, huh? That was fast. Cream rises, what can I say? No, for real. You got promoted. <laughs> yeah. To Junior Grand Pooba in charge of delivering packages and stuff. Wow. I'm in the presence of greatness. Mm -hmm. So what were you working on? Something for your dad? Sort of. Look, I, I hope you're not bugged with me. What, because of your meteoric rise through shipping and receiving? Because I was asking about Donna. Why she go out of her way to get you a job here? <laughs> nope, I wasn't mad. I was flattered. Flattered? Yeah, because you want to find out so much information about me because I'm so fascinating. Right. Right. Well, look, if I want to make senior grand poopa and boss you around, I better get back to it. Nikki, that is just such wonderful news. I mean, Bridget and her family, they must be oh, so relieved. What a roller coaster, Mother. But thanks to Bridget, she's alive. She's upstairs and doing well. A toast to two remarkable young women. Here, here. How's Katie doing? You know, she's awake. And she's with it. Still weak as a kitten. Mm. Of course she is, poor love. It'll be a while before she gets her strength back. Mother, I gotta tell you, Bridget, she was unbelievable. I can't even believe she's standing after two days of pounding on that laptop, but she was tenacious. She wasn't stopping till she got her answer. Surely you deserve some of the credit. Me? Yes, you. Mother, you may not know this, but I'm not a doctor. Yet you may have given Katie the most powerful medicine that there is, the will to keep on living. The time I spent with that girl was amazing. But the fact is, if it wasn't for Bridget, she'd be in a morgue right now instead of upstairs planning a new life. I still just can't believe this. Everyone said that there was no hope. The transplant wasn't going to take, and now this. Katie, I would have never, ever told you that you were dying if I didn't believe it myself. Yeah, but from what everyone tells me, you didn't want to accept it. You just kept looking for a solution until you found one. I just wasn't sure at first. But then I... I'm glad you didn't give up. Not a lot of people would have persisted. I love you, Katie. I love you so much. I would have never given up.
don't know how I'm ever going to thank you. Just keep getting better. That's all the things I'm going to need. You've saved my life. Not once, but twice. I Kay, owe you so much. I don't look at it like that at all. Why? Because you're a doctor? No, not because I'm a doctor. Because so many people were praying for you. I look back on it now, and I didn't just stumble on an answer. I was guided to it. I really believe that. When a patient is healed, I think it's God's decision. A lot of us that practice medicine believe that we're just God's hands here on earth. That's beautiful. But I'd like to give you a little credit. Nick wanted to come talk to you after my exam, so I'm gonna go tell him we can come up now. I can't believe what I've been through. I can't believe what I've just witnessed. Mother, if I ever have to stare death in the face, would you please remind me of the courage that Katie's shown? <sighs> yep, she's quite a woman. We've basically gone from no hope at all to she's alive. She's gonna make it. I am just so glad for everyone, Nikki. I mean, it's obvious how happy and, and thrilled you are. All right. I'm through upstairs, so you can go see Katie. Is she okay? She's getting stronger and stronger by the minute. Great. <laughs> so, Nick built you in. Oh, yes, he did indeed. It seems you performed quite a miracle. Oh, mm -mm. it wasn't me. I was just telling Katie upstairs that God definitely had his hand in this one. Bridget, don't you ever, ever sell yourself short. It's ridiculous. Hey, sorry I'm late. It's all right. Sorry to bug you guys, but I knew you want to hear this. No, it's okay, but what is it, sweetie? Marcus got hired without a background check. What? How did you find this out? Aunt Pam accidentally let it slip, along with his personnel file. Oh, well, that's our Amy. I don't understand this. I mean, we always check out everyone we don't know. Past employment, police records. Three guesses who vouched for him, and the first two don't count. Donna, what the hell is up with her and this kid? There's almost nothing in his file. They copied his driver's license from Texas, and he filled out an application, but that's it. Okay, we gotta get to the bottom of this pronto. Oh, excuse me. I dropped off some packages before I forgot this one. There's some problem I should know about. In high school, that semester away. Mom and Storm were the only ones that knew. I was, I was really staying with Aunt Bonnie. Look, you and Katie were never supposed to find out. But Katie could tell that I was rattled about something and, and she pulled it out of me. Now, I, I want you to know, too. So, you had a little boy, and you gave him up for adoption. And all these years, you never told anybody? I know. I know, I should have, I should have told Eric. I should have told him before I got married. I... Well, you chose not to. Go ahead, say it. I, I'm, I'm no better than Stephanie with all of her lies and keeping secrets from him. No. Having a child with somebody doesn't even compare to all the horrible things that Stephanie's done all these years. Besides, that was a long time ago. And yes, Eric should be told. But it doesn't mean he has to find out tomorrow. Yeah. Well, he... He might. How? My son, his name is Marcus. And he works here, Brooke, at Forrester.
What makes you think there's a problem, Marcus? I just feel the attention here, that's all. And if I'm the problem, I'd like to know. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Did she say why? All right, I tell him. That was Madison. Brooke wants you to know that she and Donna are waiting for you in Eric's office. Okay. Thanks. Brooke and Donna both? And what the hell is that about? Madison didn't know. Brooke just wanted her to track him down. Curiouser and curiouser. What better way to get to know my son than to interact with him every day? And then once Eric sees what a wonderful young man he is, he will accept him. It'll soften the blow somehow. Oh, Eric is... He's so kind, Brooke, and compassionate and understanding. You should know you were married to him yeah, once. I do, I understand, but still, there are certain things that you should... Um, Madison gave this to him to give to you, as long as I was uh, on Excuse way. us, we're busy. Brooke, we, we just called for him. This is my son. This is Marcus. Oh. Ah. Well, that's a good sign. Huh, feels good to me too. You are looking better and better every time I walk in here. I just can't believe it turned out like this. <sighs> well, it almost didn't. You know, when Bridget came marching in here yesterday with this IV bag, I started to hook you up. I stood strong to your wishes. I was honoring what you wanted to die a peaceful death. But Bridget got her way. <laughs> Thank God for both of us, she did. <laughs> yeah. The prom you should have had. And finally did. It was the best night of my life. Dying girl's dream come true. <laughs> Except the girl didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> I will treasure the memories you gave me. Always. Hey, say bye-bye. Say bye-bye to mommy. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hey, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I miss you so much, my little precious boy. Mm. Your mommy was very, very good to keep you the whole time Katie was sick, though. Yes, she was. Oh, I'm just looking forward to things getting back to the way they were with you and Daddy. Yes? Mm. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah? Did you already have dinner? I bet you already had dinner, huh? We can't pull this credit report or criminal record online unless we pay. Well, I think we can afford it. Except how do we know which sites are reputable? Well, some may not have good information. They could be inaccurate or incomplete. Look, just because prima donna waived the background check doesn't mean we can't order one. I just don't want to risk tipping her off, not until we know what the hell we're looking for here. His license is Beaumont, Texas. Texas? Has Donna ever been there? No clue. Look, Steffi, just so you know, this is not a witch hunt. I have nothing personal against Marcus. I know. It's just that Donna's proving to be a severe liability for this company. And that makes me want to know everything I can about this kid. 
Francis, I'd like you to meet Marcus Alton. How do you do? <laughs> Great, thanks. I was real relieved to hear about your sister, Katie. Thank you. It's very kind of you. <sighs> I've had such a big day already. Yeah, now I'm here. Surprise. <laughs> yes. Well, um, uh, forgive me for snapping at you the way that I did no. when you first walked in. No problem. I have an idea what y'all been going through. I mean, your family, I mean. Correction, Marcus. Your family. You're a part of us now. Welcome. <laughs> Did your grandma tell you more than a hundred times a day how much she loves you? <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Because I know you. I know the way your mind works. Meaning? Meaning, when you told me not to sell myself short earlier, I know you were driving at something, so come on, out with it. You're a very humble person, Bridget. You're, you're very modest. It truly is one of your loveliest qualities. Yet you're outrageously gifted. I, I'm, I don't know a soul that doesn't admire you. I just want you to know that in my book, it's all right for you to Toot your own horn once in a while. That's all. <laughs> this may sound a little strange, uh, but it was a real privilege and an honor to share what we thought were your last moments with you. Everyone's been talking about how brave I've been. But I have to be honest, I haven't felt very brave. I just keep thinking about that day on the beach, staring out at that beautiful ocean that we both love. I just kept thinking maybe, maybe it would be easier if I just let it wash me away. If I just let this be over. I think from the moment I woke up in the hospital and I found out what Storm had done and why he had done it, there's been a part of me that wanted to just lay down and die with him. And I thought, why fight it? Why not just let fate decide? I didn't realize what a second chance I had been given until you made me see it. You made me want to wake up in the morning. You made me want to look forward to the day. You made me see that that day on the Marlin and our prom night was just a beginning. You made me realize what I'd been missing what I'd taken for granted. You made me want to live. And I know I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know because you have this uncanny ability to know what I'm feeling before I'm even feeling it. And I don't want to hide from it any longer. I don't want to hide from life ever again. I want to say it because it was there on the beach and it was there when you held me in your arms and we danced and when you carried me up the stairs to this bed, you have brought magic into my life and I love you. I don't care who hears me say it. 